Today is a little bit different. You'll notice there aren't any harps hanging up because today we're going to do a video that's a little bit outside of what I normally do. As of late, I've been I've been super busy with building harps and I've been producing less videos, but today we're going to try to combine the two of them. Today we're going to be making a harp for my friend and um, fellow North American jaw harpist Jerry Crisp. Now, he likes harps that play outward. He likes bent triggers. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't make a harp that'll work for him. So, without further ado, let's get a little dirty and let's make a harp. Oh, 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 oh,
you're on you're on YouTube now. Love you Thank <laughs> you. 
Here we are. We're not we're not finished yet, but we're getting there. Got it all put together. The gaps aren't trued up yet. I've got the trigger bent. Jerry said he preferred burnt bent triggers, so went ahead and did that. Now we're going to have to do some some finishing touches. I'm not going to show them because they're they're my own methods, but we're going to take this from shiny steel to something quite a bit different. Oh yeah. Harpery, baby. All right, I woke up at like four o'clock this morning to take these harps out and true up the gaps. And here's the harp. I actually built several harps yesterday, but here's the harp that I built and is featured in this video. Let's take a look at it. It's my mallard pattern, pattern we've seen in the past, but I went ahead and I ground, ground all this down. And my gaps are pretty, are pretty even, they're pretty tight. Bent trigger. But we're seeing a really different finish. I did this finish really differently. And also I faced my reed. I single ground the reed and then faced it backward. I thought, well, it was an experiment. Jerry Crespi says he likes to play outward. So I'm like, well, I'll harp a, I'll, I'll make a harp that plays good outward. That's my attempt at that. I did have to retighten the crimp on it in adjusting the harp and moving it in, moving it out. I kept mo having to move the arms in, move the arms out to get the gaps to true up. It kind of loosened this up a little bit here, so I went ahead and re-crimped re it. But I really dig the finish on this. Didn't turn out too bad. This is made of the .025, 1075 spring steel. But it's no longer blue, that finish is gone, and my own finish is on there. Kind of a camouflage pattern. I built another harp yesterday. Here's that other harp. This is my take on a on a Maltrommel or Austrian or German style. I went ahead and I ground here and I ground both the back sides so that 
the harp, it's flattened where your fingers and where your thumb go. Here we have another uh, bent trigger for Jerry. This one I made at a .020 blue tapper spring steel, so it's a little bit whippier of a reed. And it's a little bit shorter of a harp. Single ground, I went ahead and faced the single grind forward on it. I put the crimp on the front. And my same, similar or same finish as the other one. Gaps on this, they're pretty tight. Almost, almost perfectly even, just a tad off. But I'm learning the bent trigger. Then I decided while I'm at it, I've been building harps for everybody else. Why not build a harp for myself? So I built this pattern for me. Looped, oblong loop trigger. I like this, this pattern. It makes it, makes it easy for inward and outward playing fast. It's really, really super bouncy. And then I grind a little bit on the back side of there so you don't even feel where the loop is. No, no hanging up on the finger, no drag. And this, this pattern, I'm calling this pattern the Recon Mallard. That harp we've seen a couple weeks ago, this was the Mallard pattern. This would be the Recon Mallard, more of a, a military look. Camouflage has some, some decorative filings in there. And I go ahead and I do round off the end there. I leave a tang sticking past the end, but I really, I really think the finish on this one came out. Oh, really nice. I do really dig it. Let's go ahead and let's... Oh, yes. And earlier this week, the pattern for this harp you just seen, I came up with on Monday. This is... I, I can't... I haven't come up with a name for this yet. I want to... All my harp names are going to be duck themed, like the Mallard, the Recon Mallard. This one, I haven't come up with a name for this pattern yet. I want a duck... A name that's themed in with ducks, but I also want something kind of Germany sounding too. So if anybody's out there and they have an idea, go ahead and post that in the comments. Your your idea might become the name for this style of harp. I went ahead and I did a small, a very small loop trigger on it. And I didn't do the camouflage pattern, but the finish come out different than it has in the past on my regular mounts on a lot of my other harps. I'm changing the way I'm finishing harps. I think this looks a little bit better and I should be a much more durable finish but I like the little teeny loop trigger. Let's go ahead and let's get an ear on these. We've seen how they look. How do they sound? Okay the harps they look pretty but how do they sound? Let's go ahead and let's give a listen. Here's the one that I made for Jerry Crisp. This is the one that we see in the process of it being made throughout the video. Let's go ahead and give a listen on it. <laughs> That was me playing inward. He wanted a harp that plays well outward. So let's go ahead and give a lesson and see how it plays outward. I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to jump around. I'm going to bounce it a little bit. See how it goes. doesn't play bad a little bit stiffer of a reed this harp it's meant to be well I designed it I was hoping it'd work well for playing fast if you want to bounce it it doesn't have a bad sensitivity the gaps are pretty tight the reed it is a little bit stiffer this is the 0.025 blue temper spring steel the other harp I made for Jerry Crisp is this one that haven't come up with a name for it yet so if, if you if you come up with a name for it post it in the comments it might it might end up sticking but here's that German, my take on a German style. It's not a German harp, it's my version of one with the bent trigger. Gaps on this one are very, very tight. I'm getting a little bit of clicking out of it. As the reed breaks in, it'll start to vibrate a little bit more true, but this harp, if, this is a loud harp. Let's go ahead and give 
some outward playing on it. See if I see if I accomplish my goal of making a harp that plays decently outward. I'm pretty content with the output of this harp. This is uh, this is a pretty loud harp um, as far as the harps that I've made, and I'm I'm really content with how it how it uh, how it turned out. I'll probably be making more harps out of the .020 uh, spring steel because it seems to be the, a little bit more flexible, and that's closer to what a lot of these harps are. I think a lot of the harps when I put the calipers to them, they were around .022, .023. Now the .025, I'm still gonna use it for longer harps and they can be utilized there. Now let's go ahead and give a listen to the harp that I made for myself. I've been making lots of harps as of late, cramming it into my free time, but I haven't really made much for myself. So I made this one and I made it longer, but at a .020, I'm like, ah, I wanna make something a little bit bassy and something that doesn't require much pressure to hold the harp up against the face. A little bit softer of a sound than I was looking for, but it doesn't play bad. I'll see how it breaks in. After four to six hours of playing, these, these reeds are going to break in a little bit more. Let's give a listen to the German pattern one. That's what I'm going to refer to it. My prototype for it that I came up with was last Tuesday. Got the little teeny dainty loop trigger. Let's give a listen to it. Pretty good output out of it. it. Sounds a little fuzzy. Don't know. Don't know exactly why, but it plays. It's really fun to play. It bounces. It, it moves fast. It moves slow. Now, the original Mallard or Mallard Standard, as I'm going to call this. This is the harp that I showed. I think it was two weeks ago. Let's go ahead and give a listen to how it's breaking in. It has the oblong loop trigger. <laughs> I am I am very content with how this harp's breaking in. The reed is starting to find its path. It's starting to click less. It's playing very very well. So I'm I'm excited about the direction that my harps are heading. Well, that's going to be all for this episode of Making a Harp. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more harpery. Harp out. Oh, 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 oh,
Oh, <laughs> oh,